Hey guys, Gil here from Next Level Dietetics. You can visit my website at www.nextleveldietetics.com. Uh, what I want to discuss in this video briefly is explain the HPTA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, testicular axis, and its role specifically in one of the two important pathways which involve hormonal balance. Uh, the, the one I'm not going to touch on in this video is the metabolic pathway, and that is the one where it affects the thyroid and therefore uh, downstream your metabolism and your effect on fat. The one I do want to discuss here is the sex hormone function in men and how the HPTA specifically translates into a better quality of life. And as you tend to age, how that would tend to suffer. So first... Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the key male hormone that is produced by your HPTA, and that is, uh, to nobody's surprise, is testosterone. Now, the peak of testosterone levels generally occur around puberty, and they tend to start to die down uh, slowly afterwards, once you're in your 20s. After the age of 30, it is estimated that men lose between 1% and 2% of their total testosterone annually. Now, in another video, I'm going to explain a little bit more about the downstream hormones and the effects of other things in your body on testosterone and, and the various balances. What I want to discuss here is just the basics for those that are really don't have any understanding of this hormone and how it operates, how it's produced, um, and what sort of a cycle or, or a feedback system in your body actually determines how much of it you're going to have. So how do you know if you have enough of it? So first off, if you're over the age of 30, uh, you will be seeing a decline on a regular basis. How much of a decline is really going to depend on your lifestyle habits, your overall health, uh, partly your genetics, uh, etc. The symptoms that are common to men with lower testosterone um, I'm going to run through them. Some of them are not directly related, but if you suffer several of them, chances are you should probably have your hormone levels tested. Um, one of them is a lowered sex drive, a lowered libido. Another one is potential erectile dysfunction. Another one is potential hair loss, especially those susceptible to male pattern baldness. Um, another one is fatigue. If you're constantly tired, if you have no energy, if you tend to fall asleep, during the day and you just have low motivation and no drive, uh, that fatigue is often a, a sign of low testosterone levels. Loss of muscle mass or a catabolic effect where you feel like you're losing strength and muscle tissue or you're having a harder time regaining muscle no matter how much you're training. Increased body fat or recomposition where your body fat is becoming elevated as a result of muscle loss. Uh, a harder time losing body fat. Uh, another one that is not so notable on the outside, but it is happening internally, so pathological changes that you may not notice immediately. Uh, decreased bone mineral density or loss of bone. Uh, that can lead to osteopenia or osteoporosis down the line, uh, making your bones more brittle and making you more susceptible to fractures. Mood changes. Uh, mood changes are primarily an indication of an imbalance of hormones, not necessarily a low level, but sometimes an imbalance. Uh, I'll get into that once we get into the HPTA. And just overall, your, your, your mood, your outlook on things, your level of anxiety and the way you handle life in general can often mean an imbalance or a low state of your, your main hormone. So um, I'm going to explain to you from a, from a scientific standpoint how this hormone is produced in your body and the feedback or negative feedback system. It's kind of a loop uh, of how this happens. So I'm going to share the screen and uh, go over this real quick. So. Over here, you'll notice, okay, in your brain, there is a uh, tiny little organ called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases various different uh, hormones that enact other signals to another organ in your brain, which is your pituitary gland. Now, from the metabolic standpoint, this is going to be responsible for activating your thyroid, and it will release a... Uh, thyroid releasing hormone, which then translates into a thyroid stimulating hormone, which then causes your thyroid to produce T4, and that is converted over to T3, which has an impact on your metabolism. I'm not going to go into this specific area in this video, but let's look at the other side, and this is your sex hormones. 
So your hypothalamus releases something called GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. What this does, GnRH right here, is going to signal your pituitary gland to make two types of hormones. One is called LH, or luteinizing hormone. The other one is called FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone. Your LH and your FSH are both going to travel through your vascular system into your testes, and there they're going to activate the receptors on two types of cells. Your FSH will be activating your Sertoli cells to generate what's called spermatogenesis, that is the production of sperm. Your LH is going to activate your Leydig cells in order to produce testosterone. Now this endogenous testosterone production in the testes is essential for spermatogenesis to occur. So if you were to supplement with testosterone and bypass your natural endogenous production, you would then lose fertility, possibly to the point of becoming infertile or greatly reducing your fertility. So it is important to note that endogenous testosterone production via LH is important for FSH to do its job in maintaining fertility. So now when the LH hits your Leydig cells and it calls for a signal to produce testosterone, that testosterone is then released into your blood and an enzyme in various parts of your body called aromatase will act on the testosterone and convert it downstream further via a process called aromatization to estrogens. Now, estrogens are broken generally into three categories. The one that is most potent and generally the one that's important to measure in men is called beta estradiol or E2. And the E2 is generally between three tenths to four tenths of 1% of your total testosterone. That is a good healthy ratio to maintain. In the absence of androgens, meaning testosterone, estrogens that are elevated can wreak havoc in men, cause things like erectile dysfunction, mood swings, potentially lead to gynecomastia, which is enlargement of breast tissue, uh, and a slew of other things. In a healthy range where your androgen ratio or your testosterone is elevated and your estradiol or, or E2 is maintained at a three-tenth to four-tenth of 1% ratio of total testosterone, you are going to be in a healthy range. You're going to be able to maintain that estradiol for benefits of bone mineral density, erectile function, libido, uh, good skin, strong nails, good hair. Um, overall feeling of well-being. So estrogen is very important in men, and it does play a key role here. Now, the other thing that the estrogen or the, uh, the E2 will regulate is this feedback system. So you'll notice this arrow here. Testosterone will convert to estrogen. That estrogen will travel back to the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, and it'll bind to the ERs, the estrogen receptors. And that will tell the estrogen receptors when there is sufficient amounts in your blood levels, and that will essentially turn off this faucet. So when your estrogen reaches the estrogen receptors and there are sufficient amounts of it, it will tell the hypothalamus and the pituitary to stop releasing your GnRH, your LH and your FSH, essentially turning off the production of testosterone so that you don't produce too much of it. When it becomes less of an estrogen environment, and it starts to drop, it will start that cycle again, sending down the hormones uh, into your testes and producing more. This generally happens um, throughout the day, particularly at night while you sleep, and that is why your hormone level should be best tested in the morning, and uh, your, your, your test levels are gonna be elevated primarily in the morning, and then they're gonna start to taper off as you go. Uh, I'll make other videos relating to the various ways to treat this, or if you have a deficiency, to treat it naturally, uh, as well as uh, therapeutic and medical treatments that are often uh, found most commonly uh, via, via you know, modern medicine to, to treat men who natural treatments have failed or no longer work on them. There are essentially two types of what's referred to as hypogonadism, that is a state of low testosterone. There is what's known as primary hypogonadism, this is from a clinical standpoint, and then there is secondary, or also referred to as type one and type two. Primary is where the Leydig cells have failed, and no matter how much LH and FSH are essentially being sent down, 
that have failed and they can no longer perform their job and produce the hormone. That is considered a primary hypogonadal state. This can be a result of uh, trauma, uh, injury, um, genetic malfunctions, disease, or aging. Now, the FDA does not recognize aging as a disease. Therefore, it usually is something that would have to be treated on your own, but it certainly is something that should be looked at as we age, um, and it definitely will improve the quality of your life. There are specific side effects that you should be made aware of on any type of a treatment you're ever going to approach, uh, so you have to weigh your risk and reward accordingly, but this is certainly something that you should consider to look at. The secondary hypogonadal state is when your pituitary gland uh, has failed or is malfunctioning, and that would be indicative of lab tests that show an LH and or an S FSH that is significantly lowered. And sometimes your testosterone levels may come back fairly decent, but your LH may be on the lower end of the scale or even below the low normal end of the scale, which signifies that you have secondary hypogonadism. Both of those are treatable. Um, clinically, people like to take, or, or doctors these days like to take different approaches to treating primary and secondary. In another video, I'm gonna discuss specifically my take on um, the treatment options, specifically how secondary hypogonadism is treated, why I feel that it is incorrect and why many men are approaching a failed protocol and the reason behind it. And uh, I'll go into more detail on that. But if you have any other questions regarding your hormones or your testosterone levels and how they may affect your outlook on life and your overall feeling of well-being, uh, by all means, go to my website, www nextleveldietetics.com and I'll be more than happy to do a consultation with you and go over specific details uh, with you one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for watching.